The crime of the century. Those were the exact words used by former President Trump to describe what he felt special counsel John Durham would uncover in an investigation into the origins of the Trump-Russia probe. Well, that hasn't happened yet, and according to multiple reports, the Durham investigation appears to be coming to an end, with far more of a fizzle than a bang. The New York Times now reporting that Durham is winding down his three-year probe, noting, quote, the grand jury that Mr. Durham has recently used to hear evidence has expired. And while he could convene another, there are currently no plans to do so, three people familiar with the matter said. That's notable for an investigation and alleged crime that Trump himself once called bigger than Watergate. You may recall that in the early days of John Durham's investigation, many in the right-leaning media were convinced this was going to break things wide open for President Trump and prove that there was a criminal deep state conspiracy led by former FBI Director James Comey, his deputy Andrew McCabe, and others. Here's Sean Hannity on Fox News reacting to the appointment of John Durham and the start of his investigation. The deep state is in even more deep trouble, no pun intended. U.S. Attorney John Durham has been appointed to investigate the origins of the Russia probe. This is huge news. This is the boomerang we've been telling you about, a massive step forward. Now, of course, neither James Comey nor Andrew McCabe were charged. The Durham investigation did uncover wrongdoing by an FBI lawyer by the name of Kevin Kleinsmith, who later pled guilty to falsifying information in a FISA warrant, allowing the FBI to continue conducting the secret national security surveillance on former Trump aide Carter Page. But there was no indication that it was politically motivated. And Kleinsmith only received a 12-month probation sentence, no prison time. The Durham investigation also indicted D.C. area lawyer Michael Sussman, who had worked with the Hillary Clinton campaign alleging he had lied in a tip to the FBI over ties between Trump and Russia. The case went to trial, and Sussman was acquitted in just after six hours of jury deliberations, in a blow to Durham and his investigation. Durham's team most recently, in November of last year, arrested Russia analyst Igor Denchenko on charges of lying to the FBI about information he contributed to the Steele dossier, now described as deeply flawed. The dossier was that controversial 35-page intelligence report alleging various links between Trump and the Russian government. U.S. intelligence officials took the Steele dossier seriously. Government lawyers even used it as part of their reasoning to obtain the FISA warrant on Carter Page, including claims that the Russians offered him damaging information about Hillary Clinton. But according to the New York Times, Durham has been unable to gain voluntary testimony from a key witness abroad, leaving in question where that prosecution stands as well. Look, we live in a hyper-politicized media world where extremists want you to believe the worst in their political opponents. But I see the Durham investigation beginning to fold shop here as good news. We should all be relieved that it was investigated, and we should all be relieved that he is not finding that the FBI is criminal and corrupt. I expect that his report will be tough on the FBI, as was the Inspector General report that investigated the origins of the Russia investigation. The, the IG found major issues with the way the FBI was using the FISA court, but that report also found no evidence that political bias or improper motivation influenced the decision to open the investigation. Joining me now is Josh Gerstein, senior legal affairs reporter at Politico. Josh, thanks for joining us. So is this really the end of the Durham investigation? I mean, it does seem like that, Dan. There is this trial you mentioned for Igor Danchenko that's uh, supposed to be starting pretty soon, but there's really no sign of him taking the investigation beyond that. And so that is what is leading many people to think that this phase of this investigation is over and they're moving in to the report writing. There are even some indications, Dan, that you know Durham's had some staffing problems in the wake of that really damaging loss in the uh, Sussman case that you know, he seems to have personally taken over the Danchenko prosecution. And, you know, it's unclear whether there are really that many sort of careerist uh, DOJ prosecutors that are interested in being part of the Durham probe at this point. But would you agree with me that when he writes this report, it will likely be pretty damning uh, to the FBI? Uh, yeah, I, ex I, ex I expect it will be an attorney general 
Uh, Garland has promised that he'll make that report public to the extent he's uh, allowed to. So, you know, I think the bigger concern, Dan, throughout this Durham investigation has been, as it was with other special counsel investigations, you know, are they using the vehicle of criminal prosecutions uh, to some degree as their report to advance a narrative? Uh, I think it's fine to have a theory of the case in a criminal prosecution, but if the primary or, or very significant reason for prosecuting someone is to try to make evidence public about something you have sort of moral qualms about, but may not have been illegal, I, I think the undertaking needs to be rethought. And that that's the main criticism I've heard leveled uh, at Durham, particularly over that Sussman case, which I sat through all of, and it was one of the thinnest federal prosecutions I've seen in a long time. Yeah, and I think that's a fair uh, criticism of Durham, because the folks like you who did sit through the entire case, I think almost uniformly agreed uh, that the case against Sussman was incredibly uh, weak, but he is still going to write a report uh, that will be used uh, by many to say that the FBI was you know, unfair for whatever reason. Uh, the, the issue that I think often gets ignored is that a lot of this was already investigated by the inspector general of the FBI, who did a very thorough and very, as I pointed out, very damning report uh, of the FBI, including about its use of the FISA court. Yeah, that is out there. I think what was a little bit new in the Durham prosecutions that wasn't focused on as much in the IG report is, you know, an IG report focuses on the conduct of government employees and government policy, government decision making. And what the Sussman probe seemed to zero in on and the Danchenko case uh, definitely zeroes in on is the question of whether there were actors outside the government, uh, possibly supporters of Hillary Clinton, who were uh, deliberately advancing misinformation to the FBI or advancing information that, you know, they had strong grounds to believe was just fantasy or yep. completely unreliable and that they somehow persuaded the FBI to launch very serious, very broad investigations based on sort of flimsy third hand stuff that could have easily been checked out and knocked down. That seems to be Durham's theory of what went down here. And, and, and again, that's fine to have as a theory, although is it the job of a federal prosecutor to you know, single out what he views as dastardly well, political conduct? And, I, I think that's an open question. And, and I should point out that the information that Sussman brought to the FBI, in which case uh, Durham says he was lying about sort of what his involvement was, was quickly knocked down. Uh, it didn't lead to a major investigation. They quickly investigated and determined that there was not a relationship between Donald Trump and this Russian bank. Um, that did not become the center of the investigation. Josh Gerstein, thank you so much for coming on the program. Really appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.